solving quadratics by factoring. But first, we need a game plan. A game plan. First, we're going to set it equal to zero. The quadratic. Then, we're going to factor. Teach me how to factor. I <laughs> tried. And then, the zero factor property and solve. So now that we have that game plan, let's use it right on up over here. I have v squared plus 8v plus 12 is equal to zero. So first I set it equal to zero. Done for us. Now I factor. So I'm looking for the factors of 12 that add to be eight. Are there any? Yeah, you got uh, ooh, two and six. So you gotta get that. You gotta get that two and six, V and V. That says the signs are the same and they're both positive. Positive, positive, and it's still all good. Factoring complete. Now what? Now we use our zero factor property. That says V plus six is equal to zero. And if it's not zero, then V plus two must be. So now we see that our V gonna be a minus six and V gonna be a minus two. Two. Ooh. So now we write it in a nice pretty package. So then V gonna be, V gonna be, V gonna be curly minus two and minus six. Does it matter the order that I put them in that set? No. I could have put the minus six first and the minus two last because that's a set and order doesn't matter in a set. But I order up another example. This guy over here say, here say, I have C squared. Minus 14C is equal to a minus 48. Great, wait, first step, set it equal to zero. So then C squared minus 14C plus, cause, 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 when it go over, over the bridge, it pays the toll, 48. That's gonna be equal to zero. Now, step two, factor. Mm, factors of 48 that add to be 14. Are there any? Oh, I don't know. 48, that's one and 48. That's two and 24. That's three and three doesn't work. Wait, three does work. So that's three and 16? Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. 16. So I can guess myself. Do any of those add to be 14? No. Keep going. So then that's 4 and whew, 12 add. Yeah, no! 5 doesn't go. 6 does. 6 and 8 is 48. And look, we have some that add. We have some that add to be 14. So you gotta get that. You gotta get that 8 and 6. C and C. The signs are the same and they're both negative. That's a minus six and a minus eight. Great, wait, that's equal to zero. Oh. We'll get to that in a moment. Now, we use the zero factor property and we see C gonna, C minus six is zero or C minus eight is zero. Then C is six or eight. But if you don't believe me, check it. You just found the only two numbers in the entire world that satisfy that equation. I know! Let's go and get another one. So we first need to set it equal to zero. Wait, wait, back that math up. <laughs> You're a nice quadratic, won't you back that math up? So that's a 12v squared. I changed the sign on that guy. That's a minus 51v and a minus 45 whole, oh, and then that's equal to zero. Step one, complete. Set it equal to zero. Now what? Oh God, oh God! We're looking for the factors of, oh, ah, yeah, oh, yeah. So then that's uh, one and 12 and two and six and three and four. Then they're all close and stuff, so I know I'm done. What am I using? I'm using the guess and check method. Then this is one and 45 and two doesn't do, three, three does. That's three and 15, all right. And then four, no, five, yes, five and nine. And then, and then, six doesn't go. Seven, no. 
Eight, no, nine, back there. All right, so we found all the factors. Now we're looking for some groupings that subtract to be 51. Whoo! So 12 and five, that's 60 minus, no, that's not gonna work. Let's try something a little tighter. So then that's 18 and 30. They need to subtract, so I need to get over it. People have been telling me that for a long time. Um, um, um. 90 minus, no. Um, um, um. Oh, dang. Sometimes the guess and check method just doesn't work out so fast. So let's take the product of those two. The AC method this time. Do they have a common factor? Does three go into 51? Three does go into 51. I can make the number smaller by taking out the common factor. So I take out three. So I pull three, boom, left on the inside. I have four V squared. Who, how many times does three go into 51? Boom, that's one time. And then that's three, two, one, 17. All right, so that's minus 17 V. And then minus, oh, three goes in there 15 times. 15 times, that's still gonna be equal to zero. All right, I'm glad this came up. So now, we're looking for four and 15 that subtract to be 17. Let's use the AC method. So then four times 15 is a negative 45. So let me break it down. Oh, all right, stop. It's factor time. That's one and 45. That's three and 15. That's nine. Five and nine. We're looking for the factors that subtract to be 17. Oh, I don't see any. Did I miss a factor? Two, no, three, yes, five, no, yeah, six, no, seven, eight. Four times 15. That's, oh. Four times 15 isn't 45. 60. So I'm down here. 60. That's 1 and 60. 2 and 30. That's 3 and 20. <laughs> Found them. That elusive factor. So now we go back to this actor. That 3 is still going to be on the outside, but I'm going to neglect him for now. That's 4v squared. The signs are different, and the big one's negative. So that's minus 20v, and then plus 3v minus 15. What did we do? Nothing. We rewrote 17 as minus 20 plus 3. Now we factor by grouping. And I pull a 4v out of there. And left over in there is a v minus 5. All right. And then I pull a three, a positive three, and we have a V minus five. Now that we have that common factor, we can pull that guy out. That's V minus five times a four V plus three. Oh, I'm gonna bring that three on down now. There's that three and that's equal to zero. So now we use that zero factor property. Whew, this one's getting low. I'm gonna call it shorty, cause shorty get low, get low. So either three is equal to zero, that's not true. Let's just X that out. Or V minus five is equal to zero. Or four V plus three is equal to zero. Then we see here that our V is gonna be five or a minus three fourths. Curlies. Box and flower. Box and flower. Woo. Box and flower. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.